For the longest time, if you've been trying to do solo content as a PvE player, Titan builds with Bonk or Warlock builds with survivability were typically the way to go. If you were a hunter, in the past you would use Void, right? To go invisible, to be able to survive longer, but it limited your, your options when it came to DPS and other things you would like to do. What if I told you there's an Arc build that will allow you to do all the great things that Arc does? To be able to do melee damage, to be able to do DPS, to be able to do add clear, all the great things that you have within Arc 3.0, but it actually does invisibility better than Void builds. So take your Ammonoculus and throw it in the trash. Try this build out. Once you try this build out, you're going to find out, especially, I know we're at the end of the season, if you're trying to solo content, like for instance, finish your duality solo, which is really difficult, or do your other dungeons, if you're trying to survive longer in GMs, this is the build that you should use because in this build, you literally can go invisible as an arc hunter forever and have a lot of survivability also in the build. First off, let's talk about the core of any good Arc Hunter build. First off, you're going to use Gambler's Dodge. Gambler's Dodge allows you to get, when you dodge near enemies, to get your melee back. You're going to be near enemies a lot of times this build, and your melee is the core to the lo play loop that you're going to use in any good Arc Hunter build. Next after that is Combination Flow. Combination Flow increases your melee damage, which stacks three times, and successful kills refill your class ability and restore a small amount of your health. So what this allows you to do is when you get a melee kill, you're going to get your dodge back. And, and again, your dodge is how, with Gambler's Dodge, you get your melee back. So you can kind of see the loop. And you again, as you're doing this and getting those melee kills, you're increasing the stacks on Combination Flow, which allow you to do an additional damage of your melee. So then we're going to add Lethal Current. After you dodge, your next melee has increased range, jolts targets, and creates a damaging aftershock. So if you're in an area with a bunch of adds, and you happen to dodge, and then you melee, you're not only going to, again, with Combination Flow, we're doing more damage, you're also going to allow you to jolt a target. So for instance, with a smaller target, you're just going to kill it, right? Which allows you to get into Combination Flow uh, build loop. But with Lethal Current... If, you, if it is a bigger enemy and you just hit it temporarily with your charge melee, it's going to jolt it. And with jolting your targets and creating a damaging aftershock, that's going to allow you to control the other adds in the area. Then you have flow state. Defeating a jolted target makes you amplified. So again, you're going to jolt some targets. If you kill them, then you get amplified. While amplified, you gain dodge quicker. Again, see, same thing as before and are more resilient while dodging, and you have a reload speed buff. So this is going to allow you to reload your weapons quicker. This is going to allow you to be more resilient, which, again, we will build into. So you can see the core of this loop is that you're going to be dodging around, you're going to be hitting smaller enemies to kind of get your combination flow, and you're also going to be able to control with your melee the larger enemies with this build. And again, this is just the base functionality of Arc Hunter. Finally all to this, I'm going to add Pulse Grenade. You can use what grenade you like. Pulse Grenade, I find does really good for ad clear and also does good area control and it lands near you and continues to damage things over time which goes in well with the other things within this build next we're going to add fragments to this build the first fragment is spark of resistance when you're surrounded you become more resistant now i will talk later in this build about how the different numbers and resistance t stacking on top of each other works but for this this is not resilience this is actually damage resistance and since you're going to be surrounded and meleeing and dodging near things you're going to want this for sure Spark of Volts. Finishers make you amplified. Later in this build, I'm going to talk about some things you can add with finishers that are going to even allow you to further extend the usability of this build. So you're going to be doing finishers quite a bit too. So again, that allows you to be amplified, which again has a lot of benefit. Spark of Recharge. While critically wounded, your melee and grenade energy regenerate more quickly. So again, if you do happen to have a problem, and if you do start to take damage, this will allow you to get your melee and grenade energy back quickly, which again will go into this play loop. Spark of Feedback. Taking melee damage briefly increases your outgoing damage. So there is a chance during this that you're going to hit, be hit by melee damage because you're going to be near adds close to you. So this will allow you to do increased damage on top of what you're already doing. So with that, you obviously already have a build that's going to allow you to do a lot of ad clear. It's going to allow you to jolt targets. It's going to allow you to get additional resistance. But what we're going to add to that is what the limitation and one of the reasons people play Void Hunter is because invisibility is just incredibly powerful within PvE content. But if you add Assassin's Cowl to this, it actually allows you to bring that to your Arc Hunter. So with Assassin's Cowl, you have Vanishing Execution, Powered melee final blows grant invisibility and restore health and shield. 
Finishers and final blows against powerful targets increase the duration of invisibility and health restore. So I'll put on the screen how this works, but primarily for the smaller enemies, so for the smaller enemies like miners and even elites, if you do a power melee kill, you're going to get invisibility. However, if you do a finisher, you're going to get even more invisibility. That kind of equates back to the same with bosses. With bosses, it's both the same for finisher and for melee kills. But this is where we start to bring the finisher. So with this ability with Assassin's Cow, you're basically going to get the ability to go invisible while you're doing all these melee kills, which will allow you to get out of trouble. The other thing this is going to allow you to do is if, for instance, as you get those kills, you're going to get amplified. It makes you run faster. So let's say you get 13 seconds worth of invisibility, which is a ton of invisibility in PV content. That will allow you to then go and get really close to the next enemy you need to kill. So you can use this, for instance, to go in, you can go and get some miner, you can get a little trash finisher, which gives you 10 seconds of visibility. Then you can use that visibility to get next to the champion to put yourself in the position to be able to then go in and either jolt them, okay, using your powered melee, or to be able to finish them really quickly, which you would never think you'd be able to do with an Arc Hunter. What really allows this to become really overpowered is when I get into some of the mods. So first off, when we talk about the mods, and we'll talk about some of the standard mods you're gonna have in any melee uh, build. So we're gonna have Melee Will Maker, which is gonna make uh, wells. You're gonna have Well of Ions, which allows you to do extra damage with your melee once you pick up wells. You'll have Well of Striking that allows you to get additional melee energy when you pick up wells. So again, you see you're building that whole thing of getting additional melee energy, of getting your melee back quicker, right? Generating wells. And then you're going to do Elemental Charge. Elemental Charge is going to allow you to become charged with light when you pick up elemental wells. The entire reason you're getting the Charge of Light is because the next thing you need, this will be the one mod you need that's maybe a little bit more difficult to, to get. But if you haven't got it, just check next time with Ada and make sure, check that rotation every day, and you can definitely get this mod. And that is Reactive Pulse. Reactive Pulse, when charged with light, when you take damage while surrounded with enemies, first off, you emit a burst of damage consuming one stack. So that sounds great, right? That's, that's something that would be very complimentary in this build. However, the next thing that, again, you're going to need to have another arc mod slotted in the same armor piece is Finisher Bulwark. This is a secondary gain. You gain a powerful overshield while performing your finisher. So again, when we talk about doing the finisher, so for instance, let's say you go ahead and finish one of the smaller enemies, you get invisible. You're also going to get an overshield, which to be honest is ridiculous. I mean, honestly, if you really work at this build, you really can't die. You're going to get damage resistance, which we'll talk about those numbers here in a second, but you're also going to become invisible all the time. And then finally, if you really get in trouble, just do a finisher and then you're gonna gain a powerful overshield and you're also gonna become invisible again, which will allow you to retreat and protect yourself. Again, which is really important when you're trying to solo or solo flawless all of the end game activity. So let's then talk about how the damage resistance works. So first off, you're gonna to wanna to try to be uh, 100 resilience. That's gonna give you a 40% damage resistance, which means for every piece of damage you get, you'll only see 60% of that damage actually hit your character, right? And so that right there is a pretty good benefit. But then let's talk about how you add to that. So because you have Spark of Resistance, Spark of Resistance is a 25% buff to damage resistance, which if you do the math, and this is where it gets complicated, that 25% basically multiplies times that base. And with that base, the mathematical formula comes up to 55% damage resistance, which means over half the damage that you take is going to go away. And again, when you're talking about damage scaling from endgame content, especially if you're playing under level in GMs or things like that, that's really going to help you quite a bit. Because in many cases, if you're in a GM, you're taking like 200% extra damage, right? So with this alone, this gets you back to parity, back to where you would be normally. But again, that's being with spark resistance being near enemies and your resilience. But in addition with some of your abilities, while you're sprinting and you're amplified, you get an additional 15% damage resistant on an arc hunter. So if you do that math again, that actually ends up being a 62% damage resistance. So again, that means you're only taking 38% of the damage that's coming in. That's actually gets you on a GM below the damage you would receive in a normal Nightfall Strike. Now, 
Again, this makes the end game content you're on, if you're trying to solo or solo flawless, very easy. The other thing to keep in mind is with the flow state aspect, and I didn't talk about this to the end, is that it allows you while you're dodging to get a 97% <laughs> damage decrease while you're in the dodge animation. So I won't even do the math. If you add that with these other buffs, it basically means you're not gonna take any damage. But again, that's only during the dodge animation. So what that does tell you is that if you're absolutely like at the end of your health and you need another second to kind of heal up a little bit more, dodging really quickly can allow you to kind of get yourself out. And if there's an enemy that's in finisher state at that point, you can then finish them and then you basically get that 10 seconds or 13 seconds of invisibility guy and go run away. That's really the video, guys. Again, this build is just, it's kind of crazy. I, for years, was a Void Hunter. That was my my main, right? That's what I used to like to do because I like that play loop of dodging and getting everything back and going invisible. I love Diamond Moculus. I love, love Sixth Coyote. But with this build, you get the additional benefits, the ad clear, the damage benefits of an Arc Hunter on. It almost, to be honest with you, takes you a little bit back to Destiny 1 because in Destiny 1, I was an Arc Hunter main. But in Destiny 2, Arc Hunter really has been underpowered. But with Arc Threat O and this build, you can easily solo any endgame content or do it within a fire team and just absolutely obliterate GMs and other activities. That's the video. If you like it, feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you guardians in the tower.